Welcome back to Hyperbaric Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Masha, and today I have with me Jess Mettinger. He's a very special guest. We're going to talk about long COVID, long COVID recovery, COVID recovery, and of course, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, as always. Welcome to the podcast, Jess. Really nice to have you with me. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Long COVID is more of a syndrome, how I see it, right? It's a constellation of different symptoms, which can have absolutely different root causes. And when we search and when we look for a root cause and we treat that, we're much more successful in treating long COVID symptoms. So going back to your first infection, when you first got these long COVID symptoms, what was your route to recovery? How, like, what did you do and uh, how long did it take? Well, I didn't fully recover by the time I got, um... okay, so my journey, like just about everybody's, is a roller coaster full of ups and downs. But, and there were quite a lot of big downs, you know, and the journey you, for even in the first year, you don't necessarily feel like you're necessarily the overall trajectory is up. The things I have done, which I have felt subjectively to make the biggest difference um, to how I have felt are rest. <laughs> I'm going to say that one first. If there is one intervention, if you like, that you can do that will lead to you feeling better 24 hours later, it's have a pure rest day. And if I have a pure rest day with no work and no phone calls and no Zoom calls and no emailing and whatever else I'm doing and no schlepping to the shops and back, if I just rest, there's a 95% chance I'm going to feel okay the next day. Um, whereas if I try and live my normal daily life, 50%, 40% chance, you know, who knows? Um, so rest is one of the biggest ones. And I think I do have to throw that in up front. Of course, we can't rest all the time. So that's where pacing becomes super important, which is when we try and get through our activities of daily living, we pace as best we can. That's a whole massive podcast in itself, pacing. Um, antihistamines have been really, really important for me. Now, a low histamine diet can also be quite effective. For some people, very effective. Um, others, less so. But for me, I take an H1 and an H2 antihistamine. So that's um, fexofenadine and famotidine. And those keep my MCAS symptoms down to a manageable level, but don't bring it down to a pre-COVID level. So I'm still sort of having to manage that. I get allergic very easily. My skin gets itchy very easy. I get headaches very easy. Amino acids, um, can potentially help with mitochondrial function. Not everybody responds um, super well to nicotinic acid or niacin. Um, some people respond really dramatically within like two days, like they're 80% better. For other people, it's no difference. Again, it depends how much of these, are you primarily dysautonomic? Are you primarily MCAS? Are you primarily metabolically affected? Um, so there's all these different kinds of things which are, have different proportions in everybody who's got long COVID. So there isn't really a one cure fix all type approach here but to go back to the question you asked me what's been helpful for me antihistamines and niacin have been helpful for me and those were sort of the mainstays of um just managing my symptoms to a degree where i could get by and live and work to some degree um they're not curative not for me but they did help manage um i also take aspirin as well which um seems to help um now in terms of the things i have done that helped kickstart a recovery as opposed to simply managing symptoms well funnily enough one of the first ones i can talk about there is hyperbaric oxygen therapy um and hyperbaric is a really interesting intervention that does seem to be backed up with a whole whole heap of logic when we look at the recent findings around microclots in long COVID and how that can lead to essentially hypoperfusion of tissues and organs. That is to say, organs and tissues that don't get enough oxygen. So if we can somehow get more oxygen into the tissues um, and organs, then hey presto, it stands to reason that we would feel better. And certainly within, you know, from the moment of stepping out of the chamber, I feel clearer. The brain fog that you've been living in for years is lifted to some degree. Um, and when you put a few sessions back to back, I find that it doesn't just increase my cognitive function, but it also increases my energy levels, my sense of well-being, my ability to tolerate activity. Um, now, hyperbaric therapy for me wasn't curative, but it helped lift my baseline up a significant level. It's a hyperbaric show. So we want to know a little more about that. 
Um, you said, have you started right at the beginning when um, you've just got long COVID? No. Uh, so I, I, I started my hyperbaric at the end of 2021. So this was a year and a half after catching, well, after catching COVID and developing long COVID. Um, so it was a quite a long way in. I suspect it might be more effective if done earlier, like with all of these interventions. Um, but it was it was sort of two weeks of daily hyperbaric that I really felt helped me move the game on. Um, and at the same time, I was also taking um, blood thinning medication as well, which uh, which I think potentially helps the hyperbaric work better. Putting that on the back of the hyperbaric and on the back of the blood thinning, that was when I came out feeling the best I'd ever felt. And then I caught Omicron. <laughs> so that was the start of 2022. <laughs> so, so yeah, those are some of the interventions that I made for me that made a big difference, but they're not necessarily applicable to everybody apart from potentially hyperbaric. Uh, you were doing higher pressure, right? You were doing it at the uh, clinic. Do you I was, remember? I was, I, was do I was doing it at, I wasn't doing it at full diving pressure, but it mm -hmm. was a, a higher pressure than the wellness clinic would normally do. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. got, I'm going to say 1.5 bar, but it might've been 1.8. Mm -hmm. And how long did you stay in the chamber for? Uh, between sixty and between sixty and ninety minutes on the whole. So some mm -hmm. sessions were ninety, some were sixty. And do you remember when you uh, were getting out of the chamber? Were you more energized that yes. day? Yeah. Yeah. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I found most striking about it was that if I turned up PEMS, so I was I'd had a busy day the day before, and I have a, my particular PEM presentation. Um, or post-exertional symptom exacerbation, which is another way of describing it, um, is a very severe frontal headache that exists kind of between my sort of, um, just up in the sort of the sinuses above the eyes. Um, and along with that comes a, a particular form of cognitive dysfunction that means I can't process information very well. Um, and that can be verbal, it can be visual, it can be anything. Um, and I'd go into the chamber, I'd come out of the chamber and the headache would have gone and suddenly the fog would have lifted. It was incredibly good at clearing that PEM. And that suggests to me that in my case, at least part of that PEM problem was an oxygenation issue. And I think what you have to do is to try and compound the gains when you're trying to recover from long COVID. And that what that I think has to mean is that you have to make a number of interventions which are significant. And amongst those is lifestyle change, I think, to some degree. And this means that you have to think really hard about the amount of work you're doing, about the amounts of stress that's in your life, about the environment you spend most of your time in, how, how um, what the, the, the people you surround yourself with, whether they are a source of stress or a source of happiness, um, all of these things are hugely important to managing the nervous system. And the next sort of large intervention I would say that I made was a concerted effort to calm down the nervous system. Um, and there are many different ways of trying to do this. Breath work is one of the simplest ways of doing it. But breath work by itself was more of a management strategy that just managed my dysautonomia. But when I started actually being a bit more dedicated about it and started actually, I joined Susie Bolt's uh, Rest Repair Recover program. I don't know if you've heard about that, but essentially it's a it, notionally yoga program but it's not the kind of vinyasa level two sort of sweaty workout yoga it's very gentle movements which you do within your own sort of activity thresholds but with a real focus on calming down the nervous system and by doing one or two classes every single day and carving out the time to do them i have noticed a significant difference in all of my symptoms because fundamentally my nervous system isn't flat out in sympathetic activation, flight or flight the whole time. And that in itself has a massive impact on our health because if we're not able to rest, digest and heal, then we're not really able to maintain our cellular function or our digestive function or anything else. Um, so it all comes down to um, addressing foundations of health first, right? How you, so. What you eat, how you sleep, what about your relationships, physical activity, rest, stress, hidden infections and things like that. And then adding therapies to help manage specific symptoms. So I've got some data that shows that um, about two thirds of long haulers can identify a specific 
events that triggered the onset of their long COVID after they had recovered from the initial acute COVID infection. And in the vast majority of cases, this was hard exercise. Um, but in some cases, it was also acute stress as well, like losing a job or moving house or something like that. And then suddenly, bang, the long COVID hits. So if you can try and avoid those, uh, those sorts of triggers, during that period afterwards, I think that would be really important. I'm a big fan of Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine. So they described a post-infectious syndrome 2,500 years ago. So what Chinese or all Chinese doctors suggested is exactly what you're saying. Have some rest. Don't overdo it. Don't push yourself over that hurdle because once you do it, it will be a lot more difficult to recover. Uh, and it's common sense really but we live in such a fast-paced world that we forget to do it we don't give ourselves time to recover from any disease not just COVID. two days we take uh, some form of over-the-counter tylenol or or paracetamol or something like that and then we go back to work but our bodies are not designed that way and the more we do it it's an abuse that we do to our physical and mental cells that should be stopped. And in a way, COVID is not a good thing, but it's telling us, hey, it's time to stop. It's time to slow down. It's time to take care of yourself because this is the only body you're going to have. So you better take good care of it and not abuse it day in, day out. And that's what we continue doing. So if we look at it from a different perspective, maybe we can learn our lessons and um, and avoid um, other complications. So can I just mention one final thing? If I had one message for people, you mentioned earlier how COVID isn't a good thing, but it might force us to take a look at our lives. I think that's a really important point for long COVID because the people who I have seen recover, even after two years of suffering with long COVID, are the people who have made some sort of, they've looked really hard at their life and their lifestyle, and then they've changed things, significant things about it. I, I see a lot of people who are plateauing, and in that I include myself, who haven't really changed much, and who are maybe taking this pill, taking that pill, trying this supplement, trying that supplement. And unless you really sort of start to change something fundamental about the stress level of your life, the environment in which you spend your life, the way in which you exist inside that environment, even in terms of the way you see yourself, I think can be important too. All of this stuff is really important. And sometimes if you can take a break from your life to take a little bit of time out and to just work out maybe, it's an opportunity to reflect on the way that we live our lives and to see if there might be a better way of doing it. And the people who have recovered seem to have done that quite successfully. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it likes. Don't forget to hit subscribe button to receive more episodes every week and share it with someone who might benefit from this information. I'll see you next week.